Here we are, already in episode three of the series. But guess what? There is so much more to discuss because at an early age, we are taught that being bigger than what is considered the normal size means that you are unhealthy in any case. But is that necessarily true? Let's find out together. Welcome to Change Series 4 Body Image, where we try to find out where we got our body image so messed up. So, here we go. There's a good chance you've heard of the BMI. BMI stands for Body Mass Index. And this tool measures our weight in kilograms divided by our height in meters squared. This number, somewhere between 15 and 55, puts our bodies into a category that is then connected to different health outcomes. However, the BMI only really shows a relationship between our weight and our height. It does not take into account social determinants of health. For example, in lower socioeconomic communities, there is a greater percentage of higher weight individuals. There is also decreased access to quality medical care, fresh food, and decreased access to sports and fitness. So yes, while at the extreme ends of the BMI spectrum, there is a correlation between body size and risk of disease and mortality, it's an incomplete story. Here's some research to back this. In 2014, for a meta-analysis on multiple studies, people's cardiorespiratory fitness and their BMI were assessed. This allowed researchers to compare people in four groups, normal and fit, in terms of weight, normal and unfit, then overweight and fit, and overweight and unfit. As these comparisons were made, the results may surprise you. Those who were overweight and fit actually had the same mortality risk as those who were normal weight and fit. And those who were unfit had twice the mortality risk regardless of their BMI. This tells us that assessing life expectancy mortality risk with fitness is actually better than just using BMI. So what we're trying to say here is don't judge a book by its cover. In this 21st century, we know that bigger bodies should not be discredited as unhealthy solely based on their size. So along with uh, teaching, I personal train as well. So every time, well, pretty much about 99% of the time, every time I took a BMI measurement, which people always wanted, they always wanted to know what the BMI was. Um, it was always an awful experience. It always ended up in a bad negative headspace. We should move away from looking at the BMI to just on how you feel and how you, how you, how, what feels great for you right now and what makes you feel great. And um, that really switched a lot of my clients into thinking that fitness is better than numbers. And I've seen massive improvements in mood because they're focusing on what they feel and putting the work into fitness instead of what is the scale saying. We would like to share two approaches with you today. The first one is called body positivity. With this approach, it focuses on building up what is positive about your body. This is great because it rejects the harmful messaging of diet culture and weight stigma. However, this one also has its limitations as it still positions our bodies as ornaments and ties our value to our appearance. But here are a couple of tips on how to practice body positivity. Number one, repeat positive affirmations to yourself. I am strong, my body is beautiful, my body is desirable. Or number two, follow social media accounts that celebrate diversity and build up all types of bodies as beautiful. And lastly, practice looking at yourself this time and repeating those affirmations, or maybe making a mantra for yourself. I am beautiful, my body is desirable, I am strong. Another approach is called body neutrality. This approach reframes our relationship with our bodies away from appearance and aesthetics. Instead, it identifies that our bodies are innately valuable. We are worthy because we exist. Body neutrality provides a framework to engage with our bodies from a place of functionality and ability. It also acknowledges we're not gonna feel positive about our bodies every day. That's okay. Regardless, our bodies deserve respect and care. 
So how can you bring body neutrality into your life? One way is to make a list of all that you're grateful for that has nothing to do with appearance. And lastly, can you give compliments that are not appearance-based at all? This could be something like, that outfit really highlights your confidence. Notice when body image conversations come up and challenge yourself to reframe moving away from negative body talk. We hope that body positivity and body neutrality will help you on your way to a better body image. But keep watching, because in the next episode, we'll take a look at the fitness industry's influence into this issue and into its solution. That's all for now. We'll see you again soon.